Welcome! This webinar will provide an overview of the ACLS Community College Faculty Research Fellowships Program. I'll start with a brief overview of ACLS, who we are, and the ways in which we support scholarship across the humanities and social sciences. Then I'll discuss the competition guidelines and the eligibility criteria, detail application components, and discuss the review process for the program. Lastly, I'll end with some application tips and available resources for applicants. ACLS, the American Council of Learning Societies, is a private nonprofit organization that has been around for over 100 years, since 1919. Many of you might know our fellowship and grant making work, but you might not know that we're a federation of 81 scholarly societies. Our members span just about every area of the humanities and include societies such as the American Historical Association, the Modern Language Association, the American Antiquarian Society, and the Latin American Studies Association. Our mission, whether through our work with societies or offering grants and fellowships to individual scholars, is the advancement of humanistic studies in all fields of learning and the maintenance and strengthening of relations among the national societies devoted to those studies. In the 2024-2025 competition cycle, ACLS will offer 17 distinct fellowship and grant programs and provide around 23 million in support to approximately 300 awardees. Each year, we receive over 3,000 applications across all our fellowship and grant competitions. Nearly 600 peer reviewers offer their time and insights to support our multi-stage peer review process, which I'll discuss in more detail later on. While we're here to talk about the ACLS Community College Faculty Research Fellowships, we encourage you to explore all our other ACLS programs. Please visit our website, acls.org, to learn more about ACLS and our suite of fellowship and grant programs. Let's now turn to the ACLS Community College Faculty Research Fellowships. Designed using feedback from faculty in the community college sector, this one-year pilot offers flexible short-term awards that allows fellows to design a research residency that works best for them from fully on-site to fully remote. This pilot program is made possible by the support of the Mellon Foundation. In 2025, ACLS will offer up to 13 awards for community college faculty to take residential fellowships at one of three participating research centers, the American Antiquarian Society, the Folger Institute, at the Folger Shakespeare Library and the Newberry Library. The fellowships may be taken up for a period of two to three months between May 1st and December 31st, 2025. I will discuss these research centers in more detail, um, but it is important to note that applicants may select one alternate site in their application should their first choice be unable to accommodate them. In addition to offering direct support for research, the program will bring fellows and other scholars together with funders and leadership of research centers and scholarly associations to advise on the development of more inclusive infrastructure for scholars in teaching intensive faculty roles. In terms of eligibility, applicants must be employed primarily as instructors at a two-year degree granting college. Applicants do not need to be appointed full-time and do not need to be on the tenure track part-time and adjunct instructors are welcome to apply. Eligible projects must address the research topic in the humanities or social sciences, which may include teaching and learning in those disciplines in a higher education setting, and must employ predominantly humanistic approaches and qualitative or interpretive methodologies. Projects must also include substantial original research that is grounded in the collections of your chosen research center. The awards for this program will range from $7,000 to $15,000 based on your project's proposed length and your chosen mode of residency, virtual, on-site, or hybrid. The awards offer $3,500 per month in support, plus an additional $1,500 per month for those who choose to do part or all of the residency on-site to defray costs associated with travel and accommodation at their selected research site. Award funds for this program may be used for any purpose that will enable full-time work on your scholarly project, including summer salary or course releases, child or elder care cost, editorial support, access to project-related resources and technology, and more. 
Awards also support flexible products, meaning that we view scholarship broadly and welcome a range of scholarly outcomes. Whether you plan to produce a book or scholarly article, open educational resources with meaningful connections to your research, or perhaps a community-engaged project grounded in research but geared towards a public audience. These are just a few examples of what is possible. Please note that any resource produced about teaching and learning must be focused on a post-secondary context as K-12 resources are not eligible for this program. Finalists of the program will receive a $500 micro-research grant to further their research agendas. I will now give a very brief overview of our three partner research centers, but I invite you to delve deeper into their incredible collections on your own. The American Antiquarian Society, located in Worcester, Massachusetts, has collections related to North American history and life pre-1900, including the largest collection of pre-1821 U.S. imprints anywhere in the world, over 26,000 volumes of children's literature, 400,000 historic American graphic art objects, and a repository for newspapers published in the 18th and 19th centuries. Next, we have the Folger Shakespeare Library, which is located in Washington, D.C. The Folger has collections related to the understanding and interpretation of Shakespeare and his works, and the impact on the early modern world more broadly. The Folger's collection includes printed books, manuscripts, prints, drawings, photographs, and beyond Shakespeare has incredible resources for scholars of performance history. Our third and final research center is the Newberry Library in Chicago, Illinois. The Newberry has a large breadth of primary sources in the humanities, such as rare books, manuscripts, and maps, in fields related to American history and culture, indigenous studies, medieval renaissance and early modern studies, and many more fields. The collection also includes secondary literature that can help researchers interpret and understand original source materials. This was just a brief overview of our partner research centers. Please follow the links on our competition page to explore their collections in greater detail. Now that we have discussed the program and competition guidelines, I will move to discussing the application and review process. Before we delve into the specific application components, it is important to note that grant writing is its own genre, with conventions that may differ from your usual mode of writing. Grant writing can be daunting, but it is a skill that improves with practice. When putting together a proposal, it is important to think about your audience and tailor your materials in a way that it is legible to them. Your ideas matter, of course, but how you present these ideas matter as well. Please remember that you are proposing a project and not just an idea. Projects have a beginning, middle, and an end, and ACLS funds projects across all stages. Use your application materials to make the arc of your project legible to reviewers, showcasing both its scholarly merits and feasibility. Most programs at ACLS employ a multi-stage review process. This is important to keep in mind as you put together your application materials. First, ACLS program staff will screen your application for eligibility and formatting. Then, first-round reviewers will read your application, and in this first round, reviewers are likely to include specialists in your field. In the second round of review, applications will be read by a multidisciplinary selection committee of scholars who are attuned to the program's goals and are familiar with the host institution's collection. Given this multi-stage and multidisciplinary peer review process, the challenge for applicants is to demonstrate the stakes of their project to multiple audiences, specialist and non-specialist alike. Now let's discuss the application components for this program. At ACLS, we aim to see applicants as whole scholars who have teaching, service, and research commitments. And our goal in the application is to provide opportunities for you to represent your obligations and interests holistically. To that end, the online application form asks you about your educational background, fields of study, 
teaching responsibilities, and career contacts, among other background information we need to collect to administer the program. Some of this background information is part of our common application profile. And if you decide to apply to another one of our programs, you will be able to carry over core information to your new application and will not have to start over from scratch. The online application form also has sections where you have to type or copy and paste project specific information such as your project title, abstract, broader humanistic significance statement, and a short discussion of why you selected your proposed research center. These four fields are the first components that a reviewer sees and the first impression for your project. Keeping our multidisciplinary peer review process in mind, it is important for these components to succinctly introduce your project in a way that is of interest to specialists and non-specialists. The abstract is a concise summary for your project. As your first impression to peer reviewers, the abstract should avoid jargon as much as possible and clearly define any key terms. Because reviewers will read the abstract before your proposal, your work plan, before your bibliography, you want the abstract to spark interest in the project and provide grounding for the fuller discussion that will take place in your other application materials. The statement of broad humanistic significance can be considered a second abstract of sorts and is particularly important given our multidisciplinary review process. In this statement, you want to frame the stakes of your project in a way that will be legible and of interest to scholars outside of your field. We encourage you to think of this as a conversation you're having with colleagues in which your goal is to highlight the broader significance of your work. If you're a historian of the US, the reviewers are looking to see resonances of your project beyond US history and perhaps even beyond the discipline of history. You should clearly articulate why does this work matter and to whom. There are many strategies for conveying the stakes of your project, discussing connections to the classroom, to broader scholarly communities and fields, or public audiences in communities outside of academia. There is no one way to articulate broad humanistic significance, and it should be tailored to your project specific focus. I want to be clear that our starting point here is that your work does matter. That is not in doubt. But part of the challenge of grant writing is making this importance explicit to specialist and non-specialist alike. This section of the application allows you to discuss your proposed residential research site and explain the reasoning for your decision. Here you may consider what collections, resources, networks, housed at these centers can you draw on to advance your project? Put plainly, why this research center? If you are choosing an alternate research center, you will have the option of including two residential site statements. Please use the links we provide to explore the resources available at each residential site before applying. Returning to our application overview, I would like to now discuss the application components that you must upload as PDFs, a three-page proposal, a one-page work plan, and a two-page bibliography. If desired, you may also include an optional one-page of non-textual supplementary materials. These components work to authenticate your project further articulating its intellectual basis and conveying feasibility. These uploaded components must be formatted in Arial or Helvetica 11 point font with one inch margins. The proposal and work plan should be double spaced while the bibliography should be single spaced. The proposal is the central component of your application, which all other materials supplement and complement. In just three short pages, the narrative proposal should explain, briefly but specifically, the research you plan to do and why, including any progress you have already made. Provide necessary background contacts and your methodology. Articulate the project's key interventions and contributions, as well as the project's proposed outcomes. 
we encourage you to not directly copy and paste your abstract or broad humanistic statement into your proposal and instead utilize all available space to build on what you have already laid out in the online application form. The bibliography allows you to list your project's key scholarly interlocutors. Use the two pages to detail your primary sources, if applicable, and list the scholarly work you will engage in your research. Consider carefully how your bibliography will substantiate the proposed interventions and contributions discussed in your proposal. Given the program parameters, it is important to include collections and resources that you will draw on from the chosen residential site. The work plan is another opportunity to demonstrate and authenticate your work as a project, not just an interesting idea or set of questions. The work plan is just one page, but as the space allows, you should detail the work you will undertake at the center, citing specific collections when appropriate, and guiding reviewers through your sequence of research activities. The work plan should align with your residential site statement and indicate when, if at all, you plan to be on site. If you have selected an alternate research center, please include an additional alternate work plan detailing work to be completed at a second research center should your first choice be unavailable. I would like to end by highlighting some tips and strategies, as well as ACLS resources available to applicants. We encourage you to read the ACLS website carefully, noting the core application components and formatting instructions for the program. Log into the application portal early to understand the full scope of the application and the time it will take for you to complete it. This will also help you troubleshoot any technical issues that might arise. We encourage you to preview your application before submitting to catch any upload errors which could hinder the readability of your application materials. Please keep in mind that every piece of the application counts. The different application components are meant to help you articulate your project beyond its central idea, prompting you to think about timeline, feasibility, and other important project parameters. Use the different components to showcase different aspects of your project plan. As you're writing, keep in mind the difference between an idea and a project. Your research is steeped in humanistic and social science ideas, and in your proposal, you're positioning these ideas in a broader context. While ideas are central to your work, our aim is to fund projects with a beginning, middle, and end. We encourage you to articulate what stage your project is in and how the funds from the fellowship will support the stage and advance it in some way. The residential centers are excited to advance your work. Provide enough information to help them see how they can help you develop your project. Know your audience. Keeping our multidisciplinary peer review process in mind, your argument and the stakes of your project should be clearly understood by non-specialists, avoiding jargon and defining key terms. Be sure to substantiate your claims, balancing theory and evidence. Finally, if possible, test with a sample audience. Fresh eyes on your application materials can help catch typos and other incongruencies that can undermine the strength of your materials. As you prepare to apply, we encourage you to take advantage of the resources ACLS makes available online. The competition and program pages share more information about the program and detailed formatting guidelines for specific application components. You'll also find links to resources like our FAQ page and essays on proposal writing. Via these pages, you can also sign up to attend office hours with program officers, which are taking place in October and November. These are small group sessions where applicants can ask any questions they may have about their application. You can also reach us via email at fellowships at acls.org. As a reminder for your application to be considered, you must apply by Wednesday, December 4th by 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Applications can be submitted via ofa.acls.org. This is the end of the webinar. 
Thank you for taking time to listen to this presentation on the ACLS Community College Faculty Research Fellowships Program. We hope you apply.